available. First watch now. What you need to know from the Cochise County Sheriff's Office. Hosted by Cochise County Public Information Officers Carol Kappas and Grady Butler. First watch on 92.3 KWCD. And it's brought to you by Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative. I'm Grady Butler, and with me is Carol Kappas, Public Information Officer with the Sheriff's Office, and Sheriff Mark Daniels. Good morning. Good morning, Coaches County. Hello, everyone. Well, let's start off with Monday. You had a very special ride-along. I did. Uh, I was notified from Joyce Clark Middle School that Yanni, one of the seventh-grade students, uh, won a prize for her good attendance, being a good student there at the school, took a... Uh, ride for a couple hours so i got the opportunity and you went with us grady uh you and i went and picked her up and took her to lunch and went out and did some traffic went out and uh she just rolled along and whenever you have somebody young like that that's never been in a patrol car their eyes are so big they're so excited and they don't they're nervous and uh but you can tell they're just enjoying the heck out of it but she's a great kid i i tell you kudos to our education system putting out kids like that because and the parents i mean she's just a happy go lucky and uh, good student, you can tell also. And she um, got a, a prize that was like a, a raffle prize that she entered, right? I, yeah, she got through some kind of effort with a prize and got into a raffle and then being a good student. So she she won that. And uh, But I was talking to her and we were riding along. I said, so you want to be in law enforcement? And she goes, no, I want to be a nurse. <laughs> I said, well, you should be with my wife then. <laughs> I mean, my wife's in the nursing program over. She's a nurse. And uh but, yeah, she just, I tried to convince her the whole ride. Grady and I were pumping her up about being a, being a cop. But, yeah, she's pretty hard set on being a nurse. So, But either way, it's providing a service to the public. It is, and it's Nurses Week. So we want to make sure to give a big shout-out to all of the nurses out there. And we have our own. So we have our own working in detention. So, you know, thank you so much for all you do. Yeah, our, our nursing staff at the jail, they do an amazing job. You know, thank you for your service to our, our office in this county. And, and I, I'd be remiss if I didn't say it. And thanks to my wife, who, Nikki, who is a nurse. And thank you, Nikki, for your service, too. And Tuesday was, like, crazy busy. So start out with the code of graduation. Wanted to make sure that we give shout-outs to our officers. Yes, Officer Riley and Officer Ruda both graduated from the code academy. And to throw another plug in there, Officer Riley was actually the academic top winner, too. So it's nice to see that. And talking to the CODA leadership, uh, they're so impressed with our people we send up there. And it goes back to our hiring standards from our outreach unit. They do. They do a very good job, whether it's sports staff, deputies, or uh, detention officers. We're hiring the right people. It's not a perfect system. I mean, I've never seen one yet, but we do. I'm very impressed with the team, uh, the team of men and women that work here. And we've got graduation coming up, so that reminds me to tell everybody that if you're graduating and want to get into law enforcement, you can start in detention at 18. You can. And to add on to that, CECOM, our dispatch, that's another one, 18. And we, we need them on both sides. Please, uh, if you're interested in public safety, it's a great career. I don't, you know, don't buy up in all the, the rhetoric out there. It's a great career. We're hiring, getting yourself in a retirement system. We help pay for your college, which I always tell the young uh, folks on that. Get it hired on with us, and we'll help you pay for your college and get your degree, too. And we usually start with things that happened last week, but since we're talking graduation, we do have uh, high school graduation and also our academy graduation coming up. We do. We got an academy graduation on May 26th, and that's a new recruit of law enforcement officers coming into the community, both deputies, police officers. So we're excited about that. I think we have four in the academy right now. Service PD has two, and again, and throughout the other uh, county with the other agencies. So again, another crop of brand new law enforcement officers are going to be hitting the streets here in Cochise County after May 26th, and we'll talk more about that as we get closer. And it's also when graduation for high school is as well. It is. And, uh, it's a busy day that day, and all the graduations around the uh, county are going to be kicking off here in a week, and all the new high school graduates and eighth grade graduates, junior high, and let's not forget our kindergarten kids that graduate out of kindergarten. So, again, exciting time for moms and dads. And just watch out for the traffic. I mean, seriously, when you're going to go yes. into any of those events, you know, pay attention to, I guess they have a loading zone at the mall at Sierra Vista for that one, and they're going to bust people over because Charleston Road gets pretty congested pretty quickly. Um, Julio Cesar does as well. So just please be safe out there. And this is the first for the last couple of years they've actually have – there's no restrictions on Buena's graduation. So I know they're planning uh, a big event this year. So, yeah, good point, Carol. Be safe out there. Be careful out there because it's going to be packed. And also on Tuesday, um, you had a meeting um, with the Southwest Border Communications Group. Yes, uh, that's a group made of, of government officials, uh, also Department of Homeland Security, and it entails 
uh, California, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, and some other states. So Sheriff Wilmot from Yuma County and I went up and did a presentation on interoperability uh, that relates to the border, mainly. So we gave our challenges there, and a uh, very good group. In fact, I just got an email from her. Uh, uh, one of the coordinators today uh, reaching back out to me. and But good contacts. And it's like CECOM. CECOM is our dispatch regional communication center. I'm very impressed with that. But when you talk to this group and the outreach that we need to do still, it just tells you we got a lot of work ahead of ourselves on that uh, when it comes to interoperability throughout the state of Arizona alone, let alone going into Mexico and other states. So, but again, it was, it was a nice experience. It was done up at DEMA, uh, Department of Emergency Management up there and their military base and military affairs. But it was, uh, it was pretty cool. I've never been up there before, but it's up there and off McDowell Road and got to see how that works, too. So it was a great, it was a great trip. And yesterday, a meeting with the Chamber Leadership Conference. We did. The uh, Sierra Vista Chamber of Commerce does their leadership course every year. And yesterday was their day to come visit us on Law Enforcement Day. And we showed them everything from the jail to our SWAT, our less lethal, our uh, shoot, don't shoot room, which is a, a virtual system. We gave presentations. I spoke to them and we fed them lunch. And just it, it's just really nice. These are our future community leaders. Uh, we've all been through it. I know Carol and I both been through it. And uh, Grady, we need to get you through that. It's actually a really good course. And this is the first time, I think, since the 90s we didn't have anybody in the course. And I told Melanie over the chamber, we'll have somebody there next year. Uh, so I was a little disappointed we didn't have anybody in there. But, again, it's a great opportunity. You always learn something, but the networking is most important. Getting to know your fellow leaders within Cochise County, which help, makes things move. And you also met with Senator Kelly yesterday. I did. Uh, we, we spoke uh, mainly about the border issues, uh, what's going on. Senator Kelly uh, proposed a grant for us through the federal uh, government for $250,000 for a new transport vehicle, new search and rescue equipment, and some other uh, one-time purchases for equipment for the sheriff's office. So that was awarded. Uh, through this Congress. So we're excited about that. So talk to him a little bit about that. But yeah, just keep that dialogue going with our senator. He's our U.S. senator. And uh, having that dialogue is very important. And not that we agree on everything or disagree on everything. We we have a, a cordial relationship. I'm, I'm proud to say we can talk like that. I can pick up the phone and call so, and vice versa. He does the same. So we had a good talk yesterday. And continuing with the state government, Governor Ducey has, has responded to your request for social media. He has. We had a meeting a couple of weeks ago with Governor Ducey and his team, and one of the hot topics was, as you see all the smuggling going on in Cochise County, the, the vehicle to making that happen is social media. They're recruiting off social media. Come smuggle to Sierra Vista. We up the price. Come here. A lot of work down here in Sierra Vista, Cochise County. That's awful. Uh, that's a criminal enterprise that's using social media to get their ill will. Uh, the means done. So we've asked the Attorney General, we've asked the Governor to come out and support us on that with some legal injunctions against social media to stop that. I mean, they're actually connecting the smuggling drivers. Uh, so Governor Ducey came out um, Wednesday with a press release saying uh, they're going to work on this. They're going to they're com- they're calling out the social media to stop that, be more attentive on that, and to block these kind of a uh, these kind of recruitment. So I applaud Governor Ducey for doing that. And you can see just on our Facebook page um, the number of Operation Safe Streets uh, apprehensions we get. And that's not all of them. We just highlight a few. And so hopefully this will be helpful because a majority of these people are coming from the Valley or the Phoenix metro area. Right. And, and you're probably saying, well, why did you go with the Attorney General and the Governor? Well, this is a statewide issue. This is not just Cochise County. And having an influential Governor, influential Attorney General that have been very good to Cochise County, we need their help on this one. So I've talked to both of them, and hopefully we can see some movement on that. If we can stop social media from recruiting smuggler drivers, we can make a big dent in this. We know where they're, get, they're getting recruited and marketing from, so we're trying to stop that. Coming in later in the show, we're going to tell you guys how you can sign up for Alert Sense. But let's talk about the Santa Cruz fire. We've been pretty fortunate. Uh, horrible fire. I mean, it went from the first day, I think it was last Sunday, Monday, mm-hmm. whatever it was, uh, from 1,000 acres and boom. Next thing I know, it's up to 10,000 acres, I think it hit. And so we've been watching that all week. Uh, kudos to the fire department out there and the fire guys. I talked to them on Tuesday, and, and they are. They, they do an amazing job out there. And so 
we pro- we've offered up our resources at the county line once it hits our county line from Santa Cruz over the back side of Fort Chuga, the West Gate. That's Cochise County, Parker Lakes, Cochise County. Uh, so again, we're watching that very closely and uh, been a good partnership with the. Uh, a ready plan, ready set go planned. So we're here, but so far, well, uh, it's worked out really well for us. And that, that credit goes not to us, but the fire departments. And some of the other things that we've been posting about, and this is uh, an interesting one. So we've had a couple scams. Um, an, a, that. One that we put out about a woman who lost twelve hundred dollars, potentially more. So she contacted us because the bank advised her she probably should when she was trying to open multiple accounts. So at least your financial institutions are looking out for you. And that was a, a plus. That's a real plus. And they're aware of what goes on. I mean, they see enough of this. They're, a, they're on the front line of this with law enforcement and, of course, the victims. And, and this is, is this the one, Carol, where she got married? Correct. On, on the Internet. On the Internet. So uh, that can't really happen. So it's, it's not a real marriage. But we just need, I guess, to, to make sure. Watch out for your neighbors. You know, somebody did post on our Facebook that her neighbor is new to technology, has a cell phone, and she asks her questions all the time. And she doesn't mind answering those questions. And she's afraid that she could become a victim to something like this. Well, people are trusting by nature. They truly are, unless you're a cop. <laughs> you're trusting by nature. So, I mean, she, she thought she had something good going in her life. And... Um, saw a path and, and unfortunately these scammers i mean they're just they, they they take advantage of that lack of knowledge if you want to call it such so yeah we need to take care of each other on that our family members especially the elderly mm-hmm. that trust so much and I, and I respect that so many ways uh, they grew up in that generation even i and uh you want to help others but man be careful on those scammers if they want your money or and man they they, they took her on that one and veering off into a little bit different direction, um, we have rabbit hemorrhagic disease coming back. I saw that. It's bad. It is bad. Um, so it is nasty. back, and it is bad. Um, someone reported from Benson that they're finding, you know, dead rabbits. So we have information on our Facebook page. Just be careful because it's something in the ground, in the dirt, that uh, wild rabbits and domestic rabbits get. And it's only for rabbits and it makes them completely bleed internally so you'll find carcasses everywhere um, we won't respond for that to pick them up but if you can report it the state is trying to track that and we're doing that through our USDA wildlife um, agent Al Tomlinson so if you contact Seacom uh, and let them know they're looking for numbers and where you're located so they can try to get a better handle on where it's happening and what's going on with that is that unique to Cochise County Carol or is that statewide it's actually um, southwest border it's, it it's everywhere so um, but we're we saw it go into a lull but now it's starting to come back and they say it's going to get really bad so again you're going to see dead rabbits and and make sure you clean off your animals feet if you have like dogs and cats that go outside clean off their feet before they come inside and make sure you clean off your feet because if it comes you bring it inside your house and you have domesticated rabbits they'll get it uh, it's, it's. I remember talking about that a year ago, and it's it's so unique. It's pretty rare, and to have it come back again, it's uh, it is. It's uh, be vigilant out there. Jumping back to Cinco de Mayo, the DUI task force was out, and they actually made several arrests. They made five arrests. I saw that too, and uh, that's sad. The the ultimate DUI task force is zero. We we want to see zero, and we got down to one or two for a while, but. I don't know what the uptick on Cinco de Mayo was, but they got five. Folks don't drink and drive. I mean, law enforcement today compared to 20, 30 years ago is different. It is. They're better trained. They detect them. And there's a high probability you're going to be charged. I just, I'll throw that at you. You're going to be charged. And and there's so many alternatives. Uber, friends, walk. I mean, walk, people. Whatever it may be, but don't drink and drive. I mean, that changes your life forever. And Wednesday, you met with the co-op. I did. I had the opportunity. This is the uh, GT&T, uh, SSVC, and all the co-ops that are attached to GT&T uh, co-ops. They come together for their annual breakfast, their annual meeting, and I've had the opportunity over the last several years to go up there and either speak or do the Pledge of Allegiance and give a, little, a few comments. So I got to do that, and it, it's nice to listen. You know, I'm, as a public safety, I'm always in the cop world thinking about cops and uh, investigations, but to go into a meeting like that and listen to talk about electricity and their, how they're addressing that and the and, uh, efficiencies with fuel, all the different things. So it was a great meeting, and uh, kudos, to, kudos to Jason from SSVC. He's their new CEO. I'm looking forward to working with him, and I saw him at the meeting. I didn't get a chance to say hi to him because it was so packed. But, uh, again, Jason, we look forward to working with you, and, uh, and thanks for the support of the Sheriff's Office and this show. And also, there's another graduation that I forgot. It's Cochise College graduation tonight. 
Cochise College graduation at the Sierra Vista campus is tonight. So I will be there tonight along with Nikki. We'll be there supporting the, the new graduates from Cochise. Uh, they'll be now alumni, and I think many in the room here are alumni too. But So, yeah, it's uh, going to be there. It's exciting. They have a – J.D. Rottweiler and his team does a great job putting that graduation together. And I, I, I didn't realize, but they all – they change it every year. Next year, I'll be back in Douglas. So they go back and forth on the campuses. I thought they were always in Douglas, and uh, but no, they they ro- rotating them now. So this one's in Sierra Vista. So Friday night, uh, Sierra Vista campus. You see a lot of traffic. That's their graduation. And if you're looking for something to do, speaking of Douglas, tomorrow, make sure that you go out for Douglas Days. Um, they've I guess been incorporated since May 15th of 1905. I just saw that. I got an invite to go down there. I'm going to run down there Saturday morning, spend some time down there with their uh, their community. And But, yeah, since 1905, the city of Douglas has been incorporated. And uh, it's exciting. It, it is. And, and I'll tell you, when I go to their Christmas parades or veterans events, it's always packed. That town comes alive for their community events. So I'm looking forward to um, tomorrow to go down there and spend some time. So if you got nothing going on Saturday, they got a parade at 10 o'clock in the morning. The Douglas Parade and then events all day long. I think they have a carnival, too. Something happening today in Sierra Vista that is really kind of fun and unique. It's an event called Top Cop. It is. This is our annual event, and Carol and Grady, uh, you guys put that together. You guys do a fabulous job putting that together. But Top Cop is something we – this is our fourth, fifth year. Fourth year. Fourth year, where we recognize all the law enforcement in Cochise County, so every agency, state, local, and federal, put a nominee in, into the hat, and they justify why they're – that person should be considered the top cop that we recognize each one of them. And then our cable, our new community outreach group, actually selects the winner. And we'll be announcing in here in a few hours who the top cop in Cochise County is. So we're excited about that. And I know the agencies, and we're also going to recognize two chiefs, Albert from Friday, uh, from Friday, Albert uh, from Bisbee and Paul from Benson. Both chiefs are retiring. After 25 years, and Paul had, Albert had 25, Paul had like 47, 48 years. So a shout-out to them uh, as we recognize them and send them off into retirement land. And do you have a stop of the week this week? I do. It was a physical fitness test there, Grady, and you know because you were there with me. It I mean, was. I looked at all my stops. This was a no-brainer. So I made a stop on a car. And you probably saw it on the Facebook, and uh, love your comments. I mean, we all got to laugh. Um, but I made a stop on a car going uh, 14 miles over the speed limit. And it, they had active construction going on, which really caught my attention to it. So I made a stop on the car. Uh, I was talking to the driver. And then the passenger was not wearing a seatbelt. In the state of Arizona, you got to wear a seatbelt. So I questioned him on that, uh, asked him for the passenger for some ID, said he didn't have his wallet with him or had no ID. Uh, he was very nervous. So was the driver. And so it sparks any law enforcement's attention for officer safety. So I ran, he gave me the name verbally and his date of birth. I run it, no record. Now, it, there's not many people you can run through our system and we're not going to find something. So I asked him about his previous, where he was had a license at, nothing. So I went up and asked the, the driver. I said, what do you know your passenger's name to be? That name was different than what he gave me. So now you're pushing what we call false information to a police officer. You can't lie to a cop. So I went back and questioned him why. The driver has a different name that he does, that he prided me. Well, long story short, I told him, I said, listen, we're going to find out who you are. When people lie to law enforcement, there's usually a reason for it. Either wanted, something just bad happened, he doesn't want you to know, or she doesn't want you to know for a reason. When I told him that, and he quoted and said, hell no, (laughs) and ran. So I chased him through a yard, and through a yard, down two alleys. And uh, he got away. So we did. So we searched for a while, and he had a previous, I call it escape, where he ran from another agency. So we're looking for him really hard. If he's listening to the show, we're coming to get you. I'll just promise you that. I mean, you've made it. He's got a probation violation warrant, uh, so he knows freedom's inches away for him. I mean, we're going to get him. But I got back to the car. I think you made the comment to me, Grady, about you're really fast. You're correct for about 15 seconds. <laughs> I didn't catch him because of endurance. So my, I've been sore the last couple of days, in fact, the whole week. And my, uh, my wife made a comment, you're out of shape. I said, no, for the first 15 seconds, I was in really good shape. After that, it fell really quick. So I respect the comments on social media. You're exactly right. So I'm going to start kicking up my physical fitness. This is a young man's game. It truly is. But So the gentleman were, uh, that I chased, and I use gentlemen lightly, we will find you. I promise you. Well, Sheriff Mark Downs, we thank you for coming and talking to us today. Grady. 
Carol, thank you, and everybody have a safe week. Take care. It's First Watch on KWCD Country, and it's brought to you by Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative. It's First Watch now on 92.3 KWCD. And it's brought to you by Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative, giving you an inside look into your sheriff's office. I'm Grady Butler, and with me is Carol Kappas, public information officer with the sheriff's office, and our next guest from emergency management team, we've got Judy Lynn, director of emergency management, and Tammy Jo Wilkins, Deputy Director of Emergency Management. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So let's talk about fires. I mean, that seems to be on everybody's mind these days. Oh, no. What what fires? <laughs> right? <laughs> right. <laughs> it, it's it's uh, already, we're already in season. We used to have a real fire season, and now it feels like um, all the year is fire season. Um, they're coming earlier and hotter than they ever have in the past, and, and we just need to be ready all the time. We've got 31 fires since March 1st this year alone, with multiple red flag wind days and fire weather watch days uh, since March 1st. And of course, uh, your office deals with more than just fires, so kind of give us an idea of what your office does. Yes, uh, they call it all hazards emergency management or all hazards emergency response. Um, so it's really just anything that that uh, puts the public at risk that first responders may need support as they they respond um, to these kinds of emergencies. So we're not the ones who actually go out and fight these fires. Um, we're not the ones who apprehend folks. We're we're not those people. We have incredible respect for our first responders, but we like to joke that we are who uh, who 911 and the first responders call when they need support. That's pretty cool. Give us an idea of some of the things that you do support. So for instance, um, specifically with fires most recently, uh, we resources are incredibly limited. So, so we want to have our, our fire folks and our incident command folks putting all of their efforts into fighting the fire and, and figuring out how, how they're going to do that. If they're lacking resources or if there's something that they need that we can help coordinate to bring in, um, for instance, we have partnered with Border Patrol to be passive recipients of infrared information from, uh, from apparatus that they have up in the sky that can, can give us mapping of the fire. Uh, we may be able to reach, well, we, we definitely are able to reach up to the state. So if we exceed resource capacity in our county, we are the liaisons to the state to go above outside of Cochise County to, to try to bring in assistance. And one of the things that you would love for everybody in the county to, to partake in, and the reason you're here today, is uh, people can sign up for emergency alerts. And you're going to tell us why that's important and how they can do it at the end. But what kind of alerts can they sign up for? So from our standpoint, the most important alerts you can sign up for are the emergency alerts. When you navigate to the sign-up page, you will be given the option to sign up for some other things, uh, weather reports, um, and and in the future we may be able to expand capacity as far as what we can prov- what kinds of information we can provide but at the moment we're we're focused on and talking about the emergency alerts. Those are the ones that are going to let you know. Um, do you need to evacuate your home? Are we asking you to shelter in place? Um, are we letting you know that, that there's a, a significant danger um, that, that you may encounter on a road? Those are the kinds of things. they. Uh, we have a lot of tools at our disposal to get public information out to people, and, and Alert Sense is the one that we use when time is most critical, and we need to get important information. Um, most of the time, it's about what to do next. So we're asking you to shelter in place, or we're asking you to evacuate your home. Um, this is not the kind of alert that, that's going to tell you there's there's a fire somewhere in the county or there's a fire near near your neighborhood. Uh, I get a lot of questions about, you know, why didn't I get an alert if, if I live a couple blocks over from where the fire was? And and um, it is law enforcement who makes the decision about where where exactly we evacuate. And, and we just, um, we use this tool very ju- judiciously so that you know when a, an alert comes in, it's important important and we're asking you to do something whether it be um, get ready to evacuate or to evacuate so you're it's pretty high tech you're saying that the boundaries could even be streets correct um, with one of the recent Bisbee fires I got a lot of questions hey Judy I was in the area I live off of Tombstone Canyon I could see the fire from my house um, why didn't I get an alert and uh, when you sign up you're giving your address or the address of your your home um, and and we use uh, 
super scientific special technology. I, I'm not your technology girl, so uh, <laughs> so I talk about it in terms of what it can do, not necessarily how. Um, but we use mapping to, to be able to go right into a view of the area that we're looking to evacuate. And we may... It, when I say we, I mean collectively with law enforcement. They're the ones making the decision along with the fire folks. They make the decision um, in a way that can mean one street is evacuated and across the street is not. Um, we try to evacuate. We try to be judicious when we evacuate folks, and, and our law enforcement friends can tell us a little bit more about the, the mentality that they have when they do this. Um, you want to make sure that those who are in danger are being moved. Um, but, but it also may be the case that even one street street over, um, we can leave you in your house a little bit longer. So so if, if, you're, if your neighbor three houses down got the alert and you didn't, I would recommend that you log back into AlertSense, check and make sure that your address is accurate and correct. Um, but it actually may be that you were not in the evacuation area, even though you were just a couple of houses over. And are there settings that the user can affect in that, or is, are the settings static? S settings as far as address right like is, can I put in my my app what I want to get alerts for or is that just all-encompassing yes you can you can sign up for multiple addresses okay. um, so if, if you want to put in for your mother's house or you want to put in for the school um, you can certainly be alerted for those things as well and you mentioned earlier and I kind of want to reiterate this is awareness versus a call to action just kind of reinforce that thank you uh, call to action is is <laughs> That's the words. The words I was looking for. Um, yes, we we don't use Alert Sense just to share information. You're going to want to go to our Facebook page, or you're going to want to go to the sheriff's Facebook page. We're going to put a lot more complete information on those pages. We don't typically use this tool to push just simply information. It it, it will most of the time have a call to action, either evacuate or get ready to evacuate or shelter in place. Um, it'll have some action associated with it and I think I know the answer to this but who should sign up for these alerts everybody there you go I knew that would be the answer so how do we do it so uh, you you're gonna navigate to um, to the web page to sign up and the address for that is Cochise dot my free alerts with an s dot com uh, once you get there it's pretty self-explanatory um, you'll either sign back into your account if you've already created one and you can make edits there or you'll sign up um, while you're on that page you can also download the app uh, I recommend the app um, both for redundancy sake and because one of the other challenges that we're seeing is with all of the spam settings that cell phones have, uh, you may inadvertently desensitize your phone to allowing an alert sense message to come through, whether it's the phone call or the text message. If you've got your phone settings set up so that you don't receive phone calls or messages either from unknown callers or from blocked callers or from people who are not in your contact list or you have your do not disturb on, um, this app is going to help you get around that because it's not tied to your contacts or your telephone. The alerts will come straight through the app and that'll make sure to make your phone make noise. So give us that web page to sign up for it one more time. You bet. It's cochise.myfreealerts.com. Well, Judith Lynn and Tammy Joe, we thank you for coming and talking to us today. Thank you for having us. Thank you. It's First Watch Now on 92.3 KWCD. And it's brought to you by Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative, giving you an inside look into your sheriff's office. I'm Grady Butler, and with me is Carol Kappas, public information officer with the sheriff's office, and our next guest. Welcome back, Cochise County, and we have Dr. Miller, the chief medical officer for Copper Queen Hospital and Copper Queen Clinics. Thank you so much for coming in today. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you for the invitation. So tell us a little bit about um, you and what you do and everything. Everything around Dr. Miller. I am responsible overall for the organization for the quality and safety of the care provided there, um, making the medical staff aware of changes in laws and regulations, uh, and I oversee our uh, five clinics, the leadership of those five clinics. And how did you get to Bisbee? It was a long road. I was born and raised in Tucson, and then I was in the Army for eight years. Uh, they paid my way through medical school. And then when I got out of the Army, I came back to Tucson, and then I moved to the Caribbean for 10 years. 
and then I missed uh, missed the Southwest, and my my mother was aging and things like that. So we wanted to get back uh, to the area, and I think um, Bisbee was just more appealing to my wife uh, and I than than Tucson. And Copper Queen has more than just uh, the Copper Queen Hospital. You have clinics around the county. Can you tell us where those are? Yes, happy to. Yeah, we span about a 50-mile uh, range uh, in Cochise County from Douglas uh, to Hereford. Our clinics are in Douglas, uh, Bisbee, Palominas, Tombstone, and we'll be opening one uh, in Hereford next month. And do they provide all services? Is it you can get primary care? What are some some of the types of services that you have at your clinics? We do. We, do. we have uh, primary care, internal medicine, pediatrics, uh, gastroenterology, general surgery, podiatry, orthopedics. I think, I think that's most of it. And you have a full service emergency room in Douglas. And I know you probably don't say a full service emergency room, but a standalone emergency room in Douglas specifically. Correct. The the Bisbee High Hospital has one attached to it, obviously. And then uh, shortly after the hospital in Douglas closed uh, several years ago, uh, those patients had nowhere to go and were overwhelming, frankly, our Bisbee emergency room. So we built a freestanding emergency room uh, that's just about 600 yards from the uh, international border and it has a full laboratory uh, uh, CT scan ultrasound x-ray and it's open 24 hours a day and you had some interesting facts about Copper Queen and the COVID vaccinations tell me about that certainly um, uh, just over a hundred and ninety thousand vaccines have been administered in Cochise County uh, thus far, and the uh, Copper Queen clinics have given over half of those. And can people still get walk-ins for if they want the shot still? Yes. Uh, on Thursdays, our Bisbee Clinic, which is directly across the street from the hospital, uh, does walk-ins. And on Fridays, our Douglas Clinic does the vaccines as just walk-ins. And that's the initial vaccines, the second dose, the booster, one and two. It's all of the vaccines? Yes. Well, Dr. Miller, we thank you for coming and talking to us today and catching us up on the Copper Queen Community Hospital. Okay. Thank you. It's First Watch Now on 92.3 KWCD. And it's brought to you by Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative, giving you an inside look into your sheriff's office. I'm Grady Butler, and with me is Carol Kappas, Public Information Officer with the Sheriff's Office, and our next guest. Welcome back, Cochise County. So we have Lieutenant Heather from the Salvation Army. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Um, so you have an event coming tomorrow. Tell us all about it. Yes, we do. So uh, as I said last Friday, uh, we are no longer opening our thrift store. And however, we have been uh, accumulating quite a bit of stuff in the last few years. And so now that we're not opening it, we are going to have a huge yard sale uh, on Saturday, uh, well, tomorrow. And it'll be from 8 till 2 at 180 Wilcox. And what kind of items are you going to have there? Everything and almost anything you could probably think of. Because <laughs> we right. had two trailers full, and we had our old building full, and so we have quite a, quite a bit of stuff. We're actually still accepting donations uh, for the, uh, the yard sale. Okay, well, let's talk about some other things you guys do at Salvation Army. I know you guys have services as well. Yes, we do. So we have church services every Sunday at 10 a.m., and uh, we have a Bible study that talks about uh, what we're, we have in our sermon, whatever it is that we're preaching on at 9 a.m. Um, but we, we're real excited because we've just started having youth programs. So we during our 10 o'clock service, we do have kids' programs. So uh, we're very family-friendly. And where does that take place? At 180 Wilcox as oh, well. Okay. Then let's talk about a new project you have, which is kind of cool. It's called the Sober Project. Yes. So um, the Sober Project, what it is, it's basically a... Uh, uh, Narcotics Anonymous, uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, Celebrate Recovery, all in one, you know, says uh, uh, we, all, we believe that you don't need to be a drug addict or an alcoholic to go through the 12 steps. And uh, the Sober Project is the 12 steps with the biblical backgrounds. Um, kind of, that's why I said kind of like Celebrate Recovery. And um, anybody who has anything going on, um, any kind of um, anything 
um, are welcome to come. It's not just for alcoholics and addicts. And how can people get a hold of you guys at the Salvation Army? So, um, uh, well, you can come down to the Salvation Army or you can call us at 520-459-8411. Well, Lieutenant, uh, why don't you invite everybody to your yard sale again one more time for tomorrow? Okay. All right. So we are so excited about this yard sale. Uh, please come down to the Salvation Army at 180 Wilcox. It will be from 8 o'clock till 2 o'clock. And like I said, we have gajillions of all kinds of stuff and lots of clothes, lots of shoes, lots of furniture. Well, not a lot of furniture, but a lot of all kinds of other stuff. Lots of things for a dollar. Yes. Lo a lo Wait, so it, it's priced to sell, not sale. <laughs> That's good. I like that. <laughs> well, we thank you for coming and talking to us today. Uh, thank you for having us. And Carol, how do we get a hold of us at the sheriff's office? So hit us up at cochise.az.gov slash sheriff. That'll take you to our webpage, or you can reach out on social media, Cochise County Sheriff's Office, Sheriff Mark J. Daniels. And we have links there to take you to our Instagram and our Twitter accounts. First Watch on KWCD Country brought to you by Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative.